All right, guys, today I want to go and react and give my thoughts and opinions of the press conference of Coach Zach Taylor. Now, I will have the questions on the screen, enhanced audio as always, just in case you can't hear any reporter's questions, you will be able to read it on the screen. So let's go ahead and get right into it and see how this goes. How do you think Joe looked? I thought he looked good. You know, it was good to get him out there. Um, you know, it certainly energizes the team when you get a chance to get your starting quarterback back out there. So I thought he looked good. Is the plan for him to do exactly what he did yesterday, more or less? Yeah, it'll be very similar. Yeah, since we are physically watching the entire practice, um, and there's no injury report yet, is he still kind of in a limited fashion, or is he full go? Yeah, we're just taking it day to day with with how we're going to integrate him in there. What's when y'all are looking at acclimating him ahead of the season opener? What's kind of the what are the things that you're looking for to make sure that you feel comfortable putting more load on him to get ready for that week one? I don't think there's a defined checklist that we need to see. Um, again, it was just good to get him out there with the team and call him plays in the huddle and all that good stuff at practice. So. I think that was encouraging for everybody. Was it key to get him in maybe this week so you have these two practices before the long weekend before game week? We, we've had a timeline that we've we've operated by for a while now, and this is just part of that timeline. How often was he able to work out and throw during recovery? Was it semi-frequently? Frequently? I, I think he's done a great job making sure that he's ready to go when, when his number was called. Not surprised. Well, not surprised at every single question about Joe Burrow. I mean... Listen, this press conference is literally just like, hey, listen, this is about Joe Burrow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, based on what I said, Joe did not do too many crazy drills yesterday. Again, it is his first process back since, you know, the calf strain. So he's not going to go out there and play, you know, like every single down, every single, oh, not me. Not every single down, every single stop. He's not going to go out there and do, like, you know, above and beyond workloads because, again, he just got back. So, oh, man, I find it. I love reporters. I love reporters, man. I love reporters. But still, so, let's listen. Describe the job Jose and his staff did here over the past 35-plus days on this one. Yeah, I, I wouldn't – I'd give praise to Joey Bose and Matt Summers and Nick Cosgray and the, the whole training staff and the whole strength staff. I think um, – our players have a lot of confidence in those guys. And, and again, that's a key thing is those two departments working together, you know, with great chemistry and great communication. And that's what we have from Matt Summers and his staff and Joey Bose and his staff. And so they're, they're both big pieces of the puzzle of rehabbing players like Joe and um, very, very confident in both their abilities. And they've just done a great job, not only with Joe, but, but several other players we've had over the years. And so... Um, that's part of one of the relationships you don't get a chance to see behind this. Obviously, you guys don't get the chance to see that, but um, I think it's it's critical to highlight that and the confidence our players have in, in those two departments led by those two men. I feel like he coaches has so much a sigh of relief now that he doesn't have to keep getting asked the same question. Like, is Joe out for the year? It's not now for the year, but is Joe hurt? How bad is Joe hurt? Is Joe coming back? Is Joe healthy? Is Joe this? Is Joe that? Joe that? I mean, don't get me wrong. This whole entire press conference is going to be about Joe Burrow, right? Because that is what it is. He is the leader of our team. He is our quarterback. He's our command in chief. But I feel like there's a sigh of relief for a coach here where it's like, he can actually now talk and actually like be able to kind of have like, a true like conversation rather than having again not being able to say much because again it's not his place to talk on the fact of Joe Burrow's injury because again I've said many times the media all they want to do is create a storyline right all they want to do is make up you know anything they can to get like a click to views and to write a story out there on the internet so it must be like a sigh of relief for coach in all honesty for that said reason Zach, how important is it to get the timing down? Obviously, the physical element is one part of it, but the timing between not only for Joe to feel comfortable, but for his teammates to reacclimate if that's necessary. Yeah, it, it's important. You know, every quarterback's a little bit different, how the ball comes out of the hands and the timing, and um, it didn't look like he'd missed many practices. I See, this is another thing I don't understand about the media, and I've always been kind of confused about. Whenever I've heard anything about Joe Burrow from the media, do they think that Joe has not played, you know, three seasons in the NFL? Do they think that Joe, I mean, you have to keep in mind, Joe has never been healthy during training camp and the offseason. Last year, he had a surgery. The year before that, he got hurt. Like, he has never been healthy. So, yes, obviously, he missed, you know, a month of training camp. 
But it's not like it takes away too much from this guy. You got to keep in mind also that the receivers he's playing with, yes, Yoshi and Charlie Jones are new and Irv Smith are new, but everyone else is exactly the same. The offensive line, for the most part, is exactly the same he used to playing with. The coaches, exactly the same. There's no new coaches. Now, if let's say, for example, Brian Callahan would have left this offseason, then yes, you could make the argument, well, that's because, well, the new OC, and you have to learn his new playbook. But Joe knows the playbook. He's been playing the playbook the last three seasons. He knows the receivers. He knows Jamar Chase. He knows T. Higgins. He has that chemistry with Tyler Boyd. All of those guys. So while, yes, there were some new guys, I don't know why a lot of media has tried to kind of pinpoint slash make this narrative that, oh, you know, Joe isn't processing and he's not going to be ready for the regular season because he hasn't processed over, you know, a month period. He could process two or three times and be absolutely fine and ready to go for the regular season. Joe is the best quarterback in the league for a reason, you know? And I'm not saying that process isn't important. Obviously, process is important. But at the end of the day, like, he could still play at top level without getting that many processes in. You had, I know Joe's so good at ad, but I think it's a big part of his game. You guys had conversations about just trying to dial that back until he really is fully ready. Just take it day to day. You know, it was good to get him out there yesterday. And, and again, we'll continue to, to work through every single day that we got before this game. Give an update on Joseph Osai. Uh, I don't have an update today. You know, I'll probably learn more this afternoon. What did you like about Will Greer? What did it say to you that, you know, he was told he was cut and to go out and play the way he did in that last person in the game? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we followed him ever since he came out in the, the process. and. Um, was in Carolina and in Dallas. And so he's somebody that's always been on our radar and thought he had an exceptional um, most recent game. There were some great things that we've seen from him elsewhere as well. And think he's a good personality fit in our room, um, a guy that we want to continue to work with. So uh, very excited to, to get him, very excited that he chose to come here, you know, and, and so excited to see what he's about more in the, the upcoming weeks. Which is crazy, too, because as he said, there was many different teams that actually approached him. And he said that it was his first time, you know, in the free agency process that he had many teams actually approached him and tried to get him to join their roster. And he chose us because of the fact he said we're a winning roster and it gives him the best, you know, chance to go, you know, and obviously, you know, compete for a Super Bowl. Uh, I'll come back to you, one second. How big of a factor was it that he decided to play? Obviously, he played well, but he kind of knew he was out in Dallas, but one of them. Sure. Um, yeah, I'd love to give him credit. You also know that that's an opportunity to showcase yourself, too. And, and he did a great job, you know, and um, I'm sure there was a lot of emotions going into that. And so just handling those emotions and the preparation leading up and pregame and all that. Uh, but then he just went out there and, and did all the things that showed why he was drafted where he was drafted. And um, again, just, just my 24 hours with him so far, uh, really excited to have him here. And, and again, there, there's not, there, there's, we're, we got to ease him into this process. He's shown up day one of the season, basically, and there's a lot. I mean, the, reading the script yesterday was Cleveland preparation, probably, whoa, that, that's a lot of stuff. But we'll get him back to the basics so he can learn offense the right way and be able to compete at the right time. Uh, Dave, sorry. Uh, I was just asking about the talk about him. Yeah, you know, a guy that we've always monitored coming out of UCLA. Um, and in his time in Cleveland the last two years. And so excited to be able to add a guy like that to our practice squad and, and see what he can do for us over the next couple weeks. I will say to the World Grill point, um, it is, that is something that they've been asking coach for or coach about the last couple of weeks was, if you bring a new quarterback in, is he going to be ready to go for the regular season? Because the opposite of what I just said with Joe Burrow is actually true with Will Greer. He's coming into a whole new system, a whole new offense, a whole new everything. And we don't really have time because he didn't come in during training camp. He comes in at the end of training camp, so we don't have time to sit here and train him how to you know, run our system correctly, how he can form this chemistry with the receivers and the players. And he will over time, but this is why, like, again, you know, this is why coach has said many times, you know, it's even say it's tricky, but alluded to it, it's kind of tricky to bring somebody in at the end of training camp and they expect them to, you know, really be successful because it's not easy. I mean, this is a whole new everything. And the team is focused on week one. And this guy's coming in now trying to focus on, you know, actually 
working correctly, right? And so it's a whole entire system of things going on, you know, moving parts left and right. So I will say, Will Greer, I do, I envy, I do not envy his process he's going to have to go through to learn this system. Uh, with Burrow kind of putting the injury completely aside, is there anything you're looking forward to seeing or, or excited to see from Burrow in year four? Winning. Zach, uh, is the expectation for him to, to go to start week one? We're just taking a day to day right now. That right there is a competitive advantage. I'll say it right now. Like, overall, that's a competitive advantage not to tell Cleveland who's going to be the starting quarterback week one. I think 1,000% he's going to be starting quarterback week one. I think he'll be healthy enough to play. But I think that right there is the competitive advantage part that Pat McAfee was talking about. I'll give him props there. How does mobility then and being able to scramble, obviously? You know, is that, is that something that he's able to do well? Is that something you have to monitor? Is that part of the easing process as well? Just how mobile he is? I think all that's been part of the rehab plan with Matt and Joey. And, uh, and they've done a great job monitoring that as he's going. You mentioned the third down running back gig being in competition kind of still the other day. When you get into the season, is that still a competition? Or would you like it to be, uh, you know, a guy is picked and they're going to be the guy for week one and for a full game rather than it could a competition go into regular season games? You know, I, I think just the way it's played out, especially with Travion's injury that limited him, he, he was a guy that was making really great progress <clears throat> in a lot of areas leading up to that. And so we want to see what he's about. He still gets an opportunity to do that. Um, I'm not going to say that it's nailed down and this is the way it's going to be all season once we make the game one decision. I, I think it needs to be a fluid situation for us where these guys know that there's potential to continue to improve, to get more opportunity. It, the game week doesn't always present a lot of great times to be able to work on that and win that battle, but we're going to do our best to, to continue to factor in every rep Every bit of uh, uh, preparation, every every question they can answer on the protections and the protection meetings, and um, so again, that that's all stuff that will weigh in as we continue to go from week to week. That does interest me a lot because I was kind of thinking how they were going to handle that. They could handle it in a couple different ways. First off, they could just have a strict order or say, "Hey, listen, you know, the backup, the third string running back is Chris Evans, fourth string is Travion Williams. That's it, you know." Chris Evans will get more play time than Travion Williams. That's it, right? The second way to handle it is by playing the hot hand mentality. Now, the hot hand mentality is whoever is playing the best in that set game gets the more carries, keeps going. And that's something that Chicago does a lot. Not a lot of people like that mentality for obvious reasons because, you know, it's like you never know what if the backup is also playing good. What if the backup, like, the backup then doesn't get an opportunity to be great, right? Because it's, a, it's that guy just having a better game. So, it's going to be interesting to see how they end up turning this out. I think it's pretty clear that number one, obviously, Joe Mixon, but he's the bell cow back. Number two, I think, is pretty clear it's going to be Chase Brown, and he'll probably be, like, the third down back starting off. But it probably will be a rotation of the three guys. And as Coach said, you know, hey, listen, if you play good, you show you're good, you show you're getting better and progressing, you're going to get more play time, which I think is probably the best way to approach it. With third downs, kind of in those situations, like – Running back and tight end almost kind of hand in hand, you know. Some like how much is the dynamic between those two spots? Maybe a part of what you think, you know, kind of those two guys will be out there up there now. Then kind of do some similar things. They, they can. Uh, you can use a tight end in that role. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put those two. It's. It's almost a little bit opposite. Um, third down, you're looking for the the pass catcher, the route runner, as a as a tight end. Um, at times, you're doing that at running back too. You know, with matchups you want. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it's totally the same same philosophy in terms of how you look at those two roles on third down. Uh, but but there's certainly times where our tight ends have been back there and been the running back and been in protection. And there's times that our, our tight ends do come back there as an extra, as a, as a seventh protector um, to be able to do that. So um, I, I gave you a around the world answer there. Um, you know, but but there's a lot to it. How much can Deontay and Jackson make? each other better. I mean, do you see that kind of going to Paul's question about the third down back? Could those two kind of be in competition as the season progresses? Oh, yeah. Third oh, yeah. We've done that. We did that at the beginning of last season. As I look through the inactives that we have, um, we, our guys competed. Frank is Frank is is hard on those guys during scout team periods to continue to get their work in. And so, again, th those that competition will, will continue to be ongoing amongst all the offensive linemen just because – uh, you feel like you're slotted at this spot as the season starts. That does not mean that that'll that'll 
stay put throughout the season. You know, Frank Frank does a great job of making those guys work all year. So I know you had one. How much does the opponent factor into the third down back? Because as you said, it might be a fluid situation no. week to week. Sure, Th that will play into it at some point. Again, we're just going to make the best decisions uh, to start the season out the right way, week one. Um, as the season goes, inactives fluctuate sometimes based on who we're playing. I'm not just talking about running back. I'm talking about 5D tackles as opposed to 5D ends. And, um, so there, there's a lot of things that factor into who the opponent is and who's going to be up or down just roster-wise. Jack, in your mind, what is the next step or next level for this offense? Um, keep playing in January and February. You know that that's that's our goal is is to continue to have great seasons where we put ourselves in that position, and that's as a team. So, again, as an offense, you're just always trying to, to uh, score points, keep the defense off the field, and, and make their job easier. Uh, as a team, you know our, our goal has always been be at the forefront of the division because, like I've said before, that gives you the best path into the playoffs. And this this division is is the best in football, and and when you come out, you're battle tested. And so, again, that's just as a team, that's, that's what our focus always is. Coach, even though uh, Michael Thomas and Stanley are not on the active on the practice squad, what, does, it, does that change their uh, role in the, in the locker room on the practice field? Or? No. No, it does not change the role on the, on, in the locker room whatsoever. Um, it does not change it, uh, on the practice field a little bit. They don't get as many reps as maybe they would be if they were active on the, on the 53. Um, just because you got other guys that, that you know we're going to play in the game. But but they've got plenty of game experience. They're there if needed. Like I've said before, I, I don't really look at the roster anymore as a 53-man roster. It's a 69-man roster with 21 inactives. And so, again, those guys are always available. Same as you look at Cleveland, you look at Baltimore. Like All those guys off the practice squad can come up in a drop of the hat. Um, so you can't pencil them in as this, this amount of players at a position. And Stanley and Mike certainly fall into that for us. I will say, just going back, coming back to its original, like, two questions ago, I think my real goal, like, for the Bengals, what I'm expecting, what I want to see, is I want to see this run game really pop off this year. And I do want to see the receiving game obviously continue to get great, but I want to see the run game pop off immensely. That's what I'm really focused on slash looking out for is the receiving game. I'm sorry, it's the rushing game. Because... If they can get that running game popping and it can be successful, you know, that opens up the pass game, opens up play action, it opens up controlling the time possession, controlling the game. And in all honesty, this year, well, yes, I would love to see, you know, Joe Burrow win MVP. I'm more focused on just closing games out and just domination. That's really what I'm focused on this year. And again, it's going to come down to Joe Mixon. We kept four running backs for a reason. Chase Brown, you know, um... Travion and Chris Evans, but I'm just focused mainly. My main focus is going to be based on, you know, just the run game. That's what I'm focused on. I know he said playing January. Obviously, we'd love to see that, but the run game is how I would answer that question. I mean, it looks like the best of both worlds. You get, you get young, but you don't sacrifice for better leadership there. I, I feel really good about how things have shaken out for us. Um, and feel like we've got a lot of depth just overall in the 69 guys that are here. Are the contract discussions? 68, I guess. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Are, the, are the contract discussions with the team in Burrow, are they still at the same level that they were before training camp in the preseason? That one's not for me to answer. I don't know why they still ask questions about that. Like, it's already been made very clear from Burrow, from the Bengals, from everyone that they're not going to talk about Burrow's contract. Everyone's tight-lipped because we're not going to make this a freaking Lamar Jackson situation where he's out there crying like a freaking gigantic baby because he's not getting what he wants. You know, Joe is professional. He handles his business like, like a man, and this is how it works. All right, so that was amazing. Amazing. As always, I love Coach whenever Coach talks. But I will say overall-wise, again, I mean, I think Coach did his best there giving us as much information as possible. Again, he can't speak on certain things like, you know, Joe Burrow's status, that stuff. But I will say that it is relieving to see Joe Burrow back at process, right? That means that he is healthy enough to actually process. They feel like he's, you know, good enough to actually go out there and be able to go full workloads in process and not have to be limited. I know there was some media that tried to paint uh, Joe Burrow as he was limping in process. 
well, that's not the case. Jamar Chase even came out and said, like, he's not limping at all. I don't know what you're talking about. So, it's going to be interesting, interesting, interesting week one and how everything goes because it's going to be a tough game. But as Coach said the other day that, you know, you kind of can't over – you can over-prepare for games. So, they're going to just take this as, okay, you know, these next two – well, next passes. So, this passes and then next passes. Um, last yesterday was last passes. The next passes is probably going to be continuing to kind of just home in on perfecting everything, and then you get into game week. And game week is when things start speeding up, things got start getting crazy, and it's going to be a fun, fun time, guys. I will be live on game week. Oh, I say on game week. I will be live for the first uh, game of the season. Of course, that is going to be on the tenth. Versus the Cleveland Clownies. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.